Alright, no, 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 no. There's no intro today. There's no me coming down the stairs, finding something silly sitting in my seat and me hitting it. That's not happening today. <sighs> Normally, it would be all fun and games here on Retroactive. This would actually be an idea I would do for a Nerd World Problems episode, but I felt like I want to try and contain this to about five minutes. So here we go. Today we're reviewing... Death Note. And I'm a big fan of it. And let's just say Netflix released a movie about it very recently. Yeah, last, last night. So let's jump into it with... Shall we begin? So, the Death Note Netflix movie. I've actually been rather excited to see it ever since it was announced, especially when I found out that Willem Dafoe would be voicing Ryuk. Oh, yes. So lo and behold, August 25th, it was finally on Netflix. I was actually excited because it was a chance to get a friend of mine into something that's related to anime. But I made sure to tell them that I'd watch it first to make sure it was actually good. So I turned the movie on, and I started to watch it, and very quickly I started to realize, man, this movie's moving really fast. As a fan of the manga, which means comic or graphic novel, I was immediately very confused as to what was going on. The Death Note is established pretty much at the very beginning of the movie when it falls to Earth, which is actually kind of reminiscent to the manga, but it actually takes Light a little longer to actually start killing people than he does in this movie. In fact, his entire relationship with Mia, which I'm assuming is supposed to be Misa from the comics, is kind of fast and really kind of dumb. Light's obviously really fallen for this girl and is willing to do things for her just because he likes her. In the manga, Light was a master manipulator and actually only used Misa to his own means. In this movie, she kind of comes off as completely insane, which isn't exactly wrong. She snickered at me! I'm gonna go kick her! And Light's more or less just a wimp. I mean, I'm usually not for name-calling people, but this guy is not Light Yagami from the comics. He's kind of useless. This is the same man that was willing to consider killing his own sister to protect himself. In Light Yagami's world in the actual Death Note manga, he is everything, everyone else is expendable. In this, he freaks the hell out when Ryuk shows up. Which, understandable, but at the same time, that is not his characteristics. But speaking of Ryuk, I think Willem Dafoe is actually very fun to watch as Ryuk, though I thought the CGI design was kind of weird and a little off-putting. A dream. I like that. Dreams are places you can have fun, right? So let's get into my biggest issues with the movie so far. The character misinterpretations and the acting are kind of so-so, but they're not really the worst parts. The worst parts, in my opinion, is the pacing of the movie. The movie itself compresses about 6 out of 12 books in the Death Note series into one movie. The problem with this is that I don't think you can properly convey that level of story in just an hour and 40 minute long movie, which ends up causing some serious pacing issues. But honestly, my biggest problem with the movie as a fan of the series is how they treated the Death Note itself. They just skipped over a bunch of rules that actually apply to this notebook, and they constantly hint at in the movie that there are a ton of rules and they're kind of hard to keep up with. And this is very true, but the reason for this is because it makes plotting things out for Light very, very difficult, and he had to use his mind and his own thinking prowess to make things work for himself. And on top of that, the rule that they introduce in the movie about if you burn the page with someone's name on it, they won't die, is not true. That was not in the original manga. You could argue that I'm being very biased about that because I'm a huge fan and that they can do whatever they really want with it, maybe put a new twist on it. But that rule felt like a cop-out, some kind of excuse to make some stupid twist at the end of the movie, which, that's what happens. There you go, folks. The Death Note Netflix movie. And I read a review that said that uh, there was nothing in that movie that would really make hardcore fans angry. And I don't agree. You know, if you're wanting a recreation of this, but just Americanized, you're not going to get it. Because, one, the movie was too short to put all 12 books into it. 
which they only cover about half the books anyway. Uh, and move too fast. Light wasn't light. Light, light was intimidating. I mean, he may not look intimidating in that picture, but he was intimidating mentally, and he was scary. You know, he started off as kind of like uh, a warrior of justice kind of ideology, but he becomes obsessed with wanting power and to become a god. You know, and willing to do almost anything to ensure that happens, and that is not what we got in this book. In a book, movie. And sure, he had one instance of showing manipulation in the movie, near the end, and that is it. But this guy here planned sh** to the months, not the days. You know, like... Uh, like, it really paled. It really paled in comparison to me. And, but Willem Dafoe's Ryuk, I thought that was a good choice. You know, all white, white, whitewashing controversy aside, I thought he was a good choice. Because, I mean, he has a good voice for it. I wouldn't mind seeing Willem Dafoe as the Joker. I think he'd be a good choice for that. But nothing could save this movie, in my opinion. I mean, it's just a teen drama with just this in it. But it's so far from this that it's not really this. They might as well have called it Killer Notebook. Or Killer Textbook. Something, you know, any. But calling it Death Note, it really doesn't feel like... That That feels more like an insult to me. But maybe it's because I'm really into it, you know. But again, there's worse movies than this Netflix movie. But to say that it is a good movie of this, no. But is there something of worth for the Death Note movie in the Netflix? Uh, some people might find it, yeah. Some people might enjoy it because they might not understand the complexities that are in this, that are so ingrained in this that they glassed over in the movie. You know, they made up rules and stuff that didn't actually work, like, like in the book like this. Like, you couldn't just have... I can't remember if you couldn't have someone kill someone else in the book. You know, I, I can't remember. It's been so long, I'd have to reread it. But, man. You know, I really don't know. Like, if, if you want this, don't watch it. But if you want something kind of intriguing and a little weird and Willem Dafoe kind of hamming it up uh, and just enjoying playing Ryuk, then yeah, go right ahead. Go and watch it. I mean, I'm not, again, it's, there's worse movies. Uh, there's better movies. Uh, but will someone find enjoyment out of it? Out of it? I, I think so. I, I didn't really, but enough, enough to where I finished watching it, I guess. So, there you have it, guys. My review of Death Note, the Netflix movie. <sighs> Bye! Oh, man. Well, the folks good in that, though. I'll be honest. I mean, like, the CGI is kind of what killed it for me, though, but his voice, he was pretty good.